time. This one does not seem to be high speed. Uh, look at, you know, how this driver is driving uh, very safely. Nothing too crazy at the moment. Uh, again, staying on surface streets right here. The vehicle did pass under a freeway just a few minutes ago, so you, you think that perhaps if they wanted to get on the freeway, they could have done that. But we're looking at, again, as you said, Alex, a stolen vehicle cruising the streets of Whittier. Yeah, trying to figure out what kind of vehicle it is. It looks like it may be a Mercedes or a BMW. Tough to tell from that, eh? maybe a Lexus. Well, I, I'm thinking, too, it's coming up on rush hour traffic here, and you have these wide open streets here. But if you know the Whittier area, it, it, it's, a, it's a wide open community. It's a wide open city. It's a wide open space there with the freeways to the west, the 605, and then to the north, the 60. But if you get on those surface streets, how we say when you go to Whittier, allow time because some of those locations that you might need to go to aren't near a freeway. So here you have these wide open streets, residential, but still wide open streets. Uh, which is, uh, of course, a concern for, for folks. These are not especially wide, even though they're wide open uh, streets that we're looking at right now as well. Um, and, you know, folks just trying to get home at the end of a long day, uh, now being surprised by lights and sirens in their neighborhood, a bunch of uh, police helicopters above head. and. and driver has been on as we continue to watch this pursuit by the sheriff's department. Uh, you know, you think with that road being so wide open, if they could even get a feel for where this driver was going to throw out a spike strip, they just drive right around it. Yeah. And I mean, it, it and th these roads are also, um, open enough that, that you would also probably have the ability to do a pit maneuver on some of these roads, but we have not seen the police attempt that yet. Um, and sheriff's department who are following this vehicle as well. Seems to be blowing through some of these intersections. Doesn't really stop at any of them. Well, it's interesting you bring up the idea of that pit maneuver. You know, we do these pursuits. Sometimes we do them live on Facebook and people are throwing out their suggestions as to how to bring these pursuits to an end. This one has not been overly dangerous besides it being perhaps a stolen vehicle. Uh, you're right. A pit maneuver could happen in something like this because there aren't pedestrians in the way. You don't have added vehicles in which the person could get out of the vehicle and perhaps try to carjack somebody else. It, it is yeah. wide open. Yeah. A, a, speaking of wide open, it looked like from that shot from from the wide shot, looks like the police may no longer be right behind them. Uh, it, 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 it appears as if uh, they may have moved into tracking mode, because what we saw earlier were, were sheriff's vehicles right behind them, and on that wide shot, it didn't look like there were any um, you know, flashing sirens behind them. Sometimes they will move into tracking mode to give some space, especially if drivers are driving too dangerously. It's a little interesting that that would happen in a situation where the driver seems to be going pretty slowly and obeying a lot of the rules of the road. Um, so it sort of makes you wonder what's happening behind the scenes with law enforcement here. Well, we're hearing now Nelson Avenue in La Puente and also our colleague who's monitoring this from the newsroom just to let me know that they did try to do a spike strip in that cemetery and apparently the driver was able to drive around the spike strip and that of course that would be my concern here where you have an open road with two lanes and the driver could easily spot that spike strip being deployed. So again here Nelson Avenue. And now we have our technology up that allows you to see exactly where we're going and exactly how fast, uh, 27 miles an hour, as we now are in uh, the city of La Puente. <laughs> So this uh, driver continues to sort of move along <laughs> here now, uh, trying to you know, get away from some of the folks. And, and here you finally see some traffic and we don't know if there is one person in the vehicle or more than one. Um, look at the person there apparently not obeying the rules of the law there when it comes to that roadway because look at in, in, in the intersection there trying to go through that traffic which could be very dangerous. This is perhaps the most concerning move I've seen this car make right here because unsuspecting motorists are like, wait a minute, what's going on here? And again, they don't have as much of a heads up about what's going on there because you don't see the police right behind them. Look at that guy speeding <laughs> right behind him. Um, as we uh, continue to follow this stolen vehicle or alleged stolen vehicle, 
Um, the, the windows are pretty tinted. This is something yeah. we've seen in a lot of our pursuits uh, lately, um, perhaps illegally tinted in the front, which makes it difficult for us to see um, whether there is a passenger in, inside this mm -hmm. vehicle or whether it's just the driver um, going on his or her own. And again, this is more like a slow speed pursuit. Uh, wondering what's happening here. Okay, traffic. We talked about it coming up on well, a little after 5 o'clock now here in Fox 11. And here is that traffic that you might expect during rush hour, perhaps in a more populated area as this driver comes up on this intersection here. Cars just whizzing right by there as they're, you know, going about their day, perhaps knowing or not knowing whether there is a pursuit here. And we are still in the area of Puente, Puente Valley now they're calling this. So moving through different neighborhoods um, and heading towards different areas, all now being impacted by this uh, pursuit as we continue to follow this driver making his or her way. Uh, interesting that so far from what we've seen, this driver has avoided freeways and this has all been on side streets. We're hearing now that there is only one person in this vehicle, a driver, and our team thinking this might be a Hyundai. Okay, there you see law enforcement yeah, right there. So now, yeah, that's a return law enforcement getting much closer. That looks like it's a sheriff's department vehicle uh, tracking this guy. On Sunset Avenue in West Puente Valley. Uh, apparently, for, for our colleagues are monitoring a closer shot here, and they're saying that the window is open, so it's hard to tell on this side of the view with the helicopter that the window is open. So perhaps if the helicopter makes the move or is able to get to the other side to see the driver, we might actually see that. So again, we're looking at a stolen vehicle, and Ellis, we haven't heard if it was stolen, you know, at gunpoint or how it was stolen, if somebody was carjacked or if it was just, you know, stolen and no other but person involved. The but good news, though, if, if that is uh, in, indeed true, that there are no passengers in the vehicle, that would make you believe that at least somebody is not being uh, carjacked right now. Yeah. Because um, that is the danger often that we see in these uh, stolen vehicles if somebody is being held with, you know, against their will inside, sometimes being forced to drive against their will in the ex example of a carjacking. That does not seem to be the case here. Now this car uh, seems to be picking up speed a bit. Cordonor. Okay, making an evasive move there, trying to get around those vehicles, stop there at perhaps a light so or now, a stop sign. Now pulling into a parking lot, you wonder uh, if this is a neighborhood that this driver is familiar with or just using this as another way to escape. Is this some place where this driver will try to park or just trying to get away? Looks like he's trying to use it to get away. Mm -hmm. Watch out. Slightly dangerous move there. Yeah. All right, this, this driver is making his or her way to the north, starting in Whittier, making its way through La Puente, and now in West Covina, closer now to the 10 freeway, if you want to get a picture or a feel for this area, 10 freeway would be probably the nearest freeway now in West Covina. This driver choosing to stay on surface streets, West Francisquito Avenue. So what we don't know is if this driver is from this area or familiar with this area. Sometimes the reason that they will stay on surface streets is because they are streets that the driver knows and, and you know, ends up driving in a circle. We just lost the picture. Our, the picture is back now. Mm -hmm. um, and that is why they will remain in a certain area and not go onto the freeway. Uh, but uh, we but this, this guy's covered a bit of territory. Yep. You're going from Whittier, which is a big territory, yeah. to La Puente up north to West Covina and continuing to drive, uh, well, back in, back in La Puente now? Okay, so perhaps the driver is now going back towards the south, and which might go back to your theory, are they mm -hmm. staying in an area that they're comfortable with that they know? Right, and we just saw a sheriff's department helicopter for a second there flying by. So they, law enforcement has, you know, eyes on this person, not only from the ground, but also from the air. The Sheriff's Department also is monitoring our feed right now, which can help them sometimes, not only in the, the apprehension of trying to get this person, but also they will use that video um, as evidence of potential other violations um, that this driver could be making in the, in the process of doing this. 
Well, the way this driver is driving at a fairly slow rate of speed, it's sometimes going as slow as 25 miles per hour, you have to wonder what's going on in their mind as they're mm -hmm. driving this vehicle. Are they thinking of a, a way they're going to bring this to an end? Because this is this is a car that you're, you know, law enforcement can see you quite visibly. Um, how, they, how are they going to bring this to an end? Uh, it does not leave you with the impression that this person is driving under the influence of anything, or if they are, they're a pretty good driver <laughs> driving under the influence because uh, we have not seen the sort of blatant recklessness that we do see in some cases uh, where a driver is clearly intoxicated. Our location now is Valenda, which is south of West Covina, north of La Puente. So kind of still staying in the general area of the East San Gabriel Valley. Um, again, there have been opportunities perhaps to get close to a freeway, to get on a freeway. This driver has not done that. I'm thinking the 60 freeway, the 10 freeway, uh, the 605 to the west. And this driver has stayed on these wide open surface streets. But again, they have been wide open and pretty easy to drive on these streets. Kind of surprising at 508 that there would be. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Now we got law enforcement pulling up ahead. It's an interesting strategy here. Are they going to try to box? And now he turns because he saw that law enforcement vehicle turns into a parking lot. And you wonder where he, where he or she is going to go now. Looks like a, they found an exit there to get onto a different road here in West Covina. So I don't know if that, that sheriff's department car was trying to box the driver in, but the driver certainly saw that coming and was able to get away from it. And there's law enforcement right there. Right there. So we have the L.A. County Sheriff's Department following this vehicle. They've been on this pursuit the entire time. Started again in the Whittier area. And, and Alex, you were noting that this went through a cemetery. Yes. That's a bizarre story alone. Can you remember that? I can't remember that. No. A cemetery just driving past all the graves. It, 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 it led us to, to wonder, is this person maybe suicidal like what what was the imagery that they were going for with that but the fact that the pursuit has carried on in so many other neighborhoods it may have just been an, a convenient place to turn according to my colleague who's watching this uh, in our newsroom the information he's giving me is that the suspect is holding a bottle of some sort mm. um, You'd like to think that perhaps law enforcement might be able to get a hold of family members or if they know who this suspect is, who this driver is, but it's a stolen vehicle. Which makes it more complicated Yeah. because the obvious thing you do in one of these situations is you run the plates and find right. out who the owner of the car is, but, but if the car is stolen, then that doesn't do you much good. We, we have had them stolen, though, from somebody they know right. or a family member or a place where you could trace that car back to someone who knows the suspect and, in some fashion. And the person who had the car stolen from them may know something about the yeah. person that stole it, right? And, and what happened and provide some clues. So we continue to follow this pursuit now on the streets of West Covina. We've been following this the last uh, 20 minutes or so. Uh, it uh, began in Whittier. It went through the Rose Hills Cemetery in Whittier. The Sheriff's Department uh, has been off and on with levels of aggressiveness. We have not seen a pit maneuver attempted yet, um, but this is the kind of area where something like that uh, may work. Uh, the streets surprisingly open for 510. Um, certainly yeah. the freeways in this area are not like that. That may be the reason that this driver is sticking so much. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. The law enforcement getting close. Remember, if the car goes too fast, a pit maneuver then becomes dangerous. So he's been going about 25 to 35 miles per hour. So keeping a watch on this concept, can they pull off a pit maneuver? Are there other vehicles in the area? Uh, what about pedestrians? That is, that's the, that's the concern. Like you just saw a pedestrian right there or other cars that are parked. I mean, you don't want to do a pit maneuver and drive, you know, send the car into another car. We're just driving past a school right now, concerned yeah. about kids or sure. other people that may be out. Um, so those are all things that law enforcement has to keep in their minds as they determine what to do. Of course, law enforcement has the advantage of time and resources. 
Uh, they can bring backup cars if they need to. If they run out of gas, they've got you know helicopters up in the air. They've got a lot of different options, whereas this driver um, is limited on all of those things. So word is the sheriff's department is already following this vehicle, a, a stolen vehicle, and the driver went into the Rose Hills Cemetery. They followed the vehicle into the cemetery. You can see a trail of law enforcement there on this vehicle. That's when they did uh, try to deploy that spike strip and the driver was able to drive around the spike strip. We're still in a fairly similar area, West Covina, but again, with this wide road here, they throw out a spike strip, he can go right around it. West Covina, a nice community, great people there, mm -hmm. um, middle class, mid, you know, uh, community um, in Southern California, and this driver sort of seems to be kind of going in circles in this area. You wonder if the driver has any connection to, to West Covina or Whittier or uh, why, you know, he is or she is avoiding the freeway. You know, when we do talk with our police analysts, I want to ask them perspective on a driver like this who's going at a fairly slow rate of speed when you think of pursuits, looking at about 40 miles an hour here, give or take. When you think of this road being so wide open, how easily it could be for this driver to really go at a high rate of speed, yet the driver is not. So I'm wondering what kind of state of mind we have here. Okay, now the speed is really slowing down here. Mm. So, so I'm wondering what, what they gain, what information they gain from a person who's not really endangering a lot of lives here right. in this pursuit. And thank goodness for that. But then you wonder also what sort of background information that they have on this person. You said the possibility of a, a bottle. Okay, so moving up, this could be a possibility of, of a pit maneuver here based off of the way that this sheriff's department is driving. You see the driver trying to get away. This would be the way that you would do it. Getting closer. There, Here, there it is. There's the pit maneuver, oh. and they missed. Sped it looked up. like they missed. Sped up. So that, from what we can tell, our first unsuccessful pit maneuver, it happens in West Covina on Azusa Avenue. And so that right there is a picture-perfect example of what viewers can expect when they sometimes write us on our Facebook Lives when we're covering this. Why don't they do a pit maneuver? Why don't they do this or that? Well, you saw it right there, how difficult it is to execute that, how difficult it is to make that happen. That driver, clearly aware that there was a move being made on him, or it could be her, uh, aware that there was a move being made by law enforcement and sped okay, up. So now okay. we're trying sidewalk? to... Are we on a sidewalk here? Wow. On a sidewalk. Wow. So now we're starting okay. to get increasingly desperate exactly. as we get away. That makes you concern. That makes law enforcement concern as well. Um, now this guy's speeding up. I mean, this driver is clearly very well aware of, of yeah. the law enforcement trailing him or her. Uh, the uh, clearly, you know, has now avoided a spike strip and avoided a pit maneuver. And then the one side of traffic was able to drive on the sidewalk and then get back onto the main road. Yeah. Well, you know. There's no hiding that there's law enforcement behind you when you're driving a vehicle like this in broad daylight. We saw the sheriff's helicopter fly by as well. So this driver clearly knows law enforcement is right there and clearly saying to law enforcement, I'm not stopping just yet. This pursuit is not over yet. Okay, that sheriff's department vehicle speeding up yet again. Let's see if they make another move. Again, the suspect vehicle picking up speed. And like yeah. you said, Alex, oh. that makes it increasingly more dangerous as the suspect picks up speed. And you, and you wonder why, too, sometimes when law enforcement doesn't move in, because the driver now is clearly stepping up his game as well. Yeah, and these, da and, and these speeds are starting to be more yeah. dangerous as we get 50, 60 miles an hour on a side street um, that could be crowded at 516 in the evening. Um, that's you know potentially dangerous sure and, and you look also at and now all the different cars and homes and everything else that are around it makes it more complicated mm -hmm. for the, an attempt at another pit maneuver to try to end this thing and, so and we, there we, you have right there other vehicles the concern for other motorists who are trying to okay get so home. here we go so uh, could we see another pit maneuver here And now that driver picking up speed to 50 miles an hour, it's much more dangerous to attempt something like a pit maneuver when you're up in those sorts of speeds. 
Location now is in Covina. We have seen this pursuit in West Covina. So now this vehicle has been moving to the uh, northeast as it moves into Covina for the first time here. Like you said, Alex, they're picking up speeds here, 55 miles per hour, give or take, and uh, obviously trying to evade law enforcement as they attempt to signal that they want to bring this to an end by, by a pit maneuver there. Uh, again, I just let our viewers know this is how hard it is. This is what law enforcement is dealing with. And it's about safety first. It's about those officers going home at night. It's about you know preventing loss of life there on the road with other motorists and other vehicles. Uh, and Christine, we've been saying that it was the sheriff's department that's yeah. been pursuing that. That is a police vehicle. I, b I believe it's, it's West move. Covina Police. Look at uh, that. So move. that's look at that. A very dangerous move there. And now we see the West Covina Police cruiser picking up speed to try to stay with this this person. So again, now we look at the charges that this driver will face, and they're starting to add up as this driver makes more and more moves to get away from law enforcement that are dangerous and against the law and picking up speeds here again. And so the question now, does the mindset of law enforcement Got through and that Vincent, intersection. which is below the 210 freeway. And again, Alex, you know, we look at these streets here at 519 p.m., and they are wide open. Mm. It's not the Los Angeles that people think of heavy traffic during rush hour, but in some of these communities, they have these wide open streets. I'm surprised because every time I drove through these exactly. areas, it wasn't exactly. quite like this. So I guess an, uh, a lucky night uh, for Azusa, as they like to say, everything in the USA from A to Z, uh, one of our great communities in Southern California. Uh, so again, we're near the freeway. The driver chooses not to go on the freeway and continues to, to move on the side streets. Now we are on Azusa Avenue in Azusa. So it's interesting to me because law enforcement has changed when it comes to the jurisdiction taking over this pursuit. West Covina PD had picked up this pursuit here. It started in Pico Rivera around 4.30 in the afternoon. So we're almost coming up on an hour here and we are now farther to the north here in Azusa as we have the West Covina PD and the Sheriff's Department who have been on this. Again, one driver. So some of the cities that we've gone through now, Pico Rivera, Whittier, La Puente, Azusa, uh, Covina. Um, so, uh, you know, we, we were speculating earlier whether this person would just drive in one circle in one community, and, and it certainly does not seem to be that way, that based off of the recent actions by this driver. It seems like somebody who is very well aware of where law enforcement is and somebody who is very desperate to get away from them. All right, this driver again had a chance to get close to a freeway. Uh, this was the 210 freeway, passed underneath the 210 freeway to get into the Azusa community there. Uh, I, I saw some bicyclists there on the street, so this mm -hmm. is reminding us now, a pedestrian right there. A pedestrian reminding you now of the dangers. Okay, what happens here? We're in this okay. open lot. Uh, we have not seen any sign now of this driver drive, stopping. Now we're nope. driving onto some gravel on a sidewalk yep. and out. The fact that, that the driver is on this SUV. The wrong way? And you see a lot the of wrong way? Uh, the police SUVs. Um, it gives the driver more options to do something like that because there are some vehicles that you drive would not have that ability to do that as easily. Um, it's sort of showcasing what this, this vehicle can do in, in driving in the middle of a median and driving down gravel and things like that. So the concern here is, and as you are seeing perhaps more pedestrians, is that we're getting closer to Citrus College. Now you think of college students out there out at all hours of the day going mm -hmm. to and from classes. Uh, that would be my concern here for law enforcement as well. Might you encounter more pedestrians as we get closer to a college? Mm -hmm. Azusa Pacific University, Citrus College. Yeah, we just went through some of the downtown uh, area of Azusa. Uh, so we continue down Azusa Avenue uh, in the city of Azusa. 
this pursuit, this driver wanted for a stolen vehicle. It already has gone through the Rose Hills Cemetery and now picking up speeds. <clears throat> And again, noting how wide open it is here on a Wednesday. Which really is good news considering the way that this driver has shown a ability and proclivity to drive dangerously when needed. Uh, the driver seems to avoid evasive maneuvers when he, doesn't, he or she doesn't need to, but when desperate, seems to be willing to do just about anything. Vehicle has been on Sierra Madre Avenue, now on Azusa Avenue. And this vehicle then would be north of the 210 freeway. I'm thinking now closer to even perhaps Glendora. If the Azusa and Glendora, they kind of, the college is right there in, the, in between the two, basically. Mm -hmm. But again, this driver not choosing to get on any of the freeways that he has passed, uh, the 605, the 60, the 10, the 210, staying on these surface streets. But then again, the freeway might be even more backed up at this hour. So we're now on uh, San Gabriel Canyon Road. Okay. That's where this driver is now headed. And you see that, that increasingly long line of law enforcement vehicles trailing. Uh, we've had several different jurisdictions of law enforcement involved in this, including the Sheriff's Department, West Covina PD, and others as we've gone through so many different jurisdictions. Um, so far in this last nearly hour-long pursuit. So as you've seen, perhaps if you've been watching this pursuit from the beginning, there have been attempts to bring this pursuit to a close. Uh, we didn't catch it when they, do, uh, they did the spike strip earlier, so we picked it up a little bit after that, but they did try a spike strip. Look at the vehicle there by the law enforcement. Are we on a freeway now? No, mountain no, roads. We're on mountain roads. Which could be, you know, dangerous if they get to be windy in certain areas. Uh, we did see an attempt at a pit maneuver that did not work. Um, the driver just sped up. Uh, when the driver was in a lot of traffic, uh, drove on the wrong side of the road, drove against traffic, and did other evasive maneuvers, drove through a parking lot, onto side, sidewalks in order to get away. So, so now we are going up, and we just lost our picture there for a moment. Because the vehicle, yeah, is heading towards the Angeles National Forest. So if we have lost our uh, chopper avail availability because of the mountain range, perhaps, the mountains there, um, that's that. We'll try to keep a watch on this one, but it'd be hard for this vehicle to like easily back. turn around. Okay, going back to that pursuit. But, but look here, going up a mountain road here, San Gabriel Canyon Road, towards the Angeles National Forest, uh, it's, it's wide open enough, but hard to really get away from law enforcement if you're going to try to make a U-turn and go back down the hill. Yeah, this is sort of you're going where you're going, but maybe this person's not thinking that clearly. Uh, you see that helicopter right there. Or perhaps made, I mean, made a turn or turned down a the road, other went thing, down a road. The, the other thing that you would think with these mountain roads that it might give, because there really is only one way to go, you wonder if they're able to get ahead and, and deploy a spike strip or something else because They'd have to come it, you know, we've down seen the hill, up, we, up the hill and come down, right? right? Yeah. We or maybe attempt to go ahead of this person because we've seen those evasive maneuvers where they will this this person will head into a parking lot or head in somewhere else. But if if you're on a one lane windy road, there's nowhere to turn. So this is north of Azusa, San Gabriel Canyon Road. Uh, there's a reservoir at some point that will come up on the right. It's called Morris Reservoir. Um, you do have to wonder this person's state of mind. I mean, mm -hmm. Eventually, they'd run out of gas in that SUV, eventually. Um, and I'm wondering if the West Covina Police Department stays with this pursuit or does some kind of handoff. It was the Sheriff's Department earlier mm -hmm. than West Covina PD. And now going through this mountain range, does that change uh, who's going to pick this up and try to bring this to a close at some point? Although, as you mentioned, it's probably more challenging to get people up there <laughs> um, as easily as we, uh, you know, headed up uh, Angeles Crest. Well, we think, too, of officer safety because, you know, if they don't know who this suspect is, they don't know then if the person is armed or not. Uh, and again, 
when this does come to an end, I mean, it's going to be very hard for this driver to turn around. There's no parking lot necessarily to cross over through. Mm -hmm. There's no uh, left turn or right turn that's going to take you in a different direction. So I I'm wondering what this driver is thinking. And the other thing is that, okay, okay oh, here oh, we no. go, here oh, we no. go. Okay. So okay. where is this person? So now we're That's driving. That's such a bizarre move. Now you really wonder about this person's yeah. state of mind. Yes. So now driving. Oh, you wonder where this, you know, we saw. A, a, so so this driver now has, is certainly making a strange move, hoping the person just stops the vehicle and realizes this pursuit has got to come to an end. I mean, you hope that this person is not suicidal. Yeah. Because that is a very strange thing. So the question is, are we going to have a standoff situation mm -hmm. here? Or is this guy or girl going to continue to drive, but where? And we think of standoff situations where they've had to bring in like the Bearcat or bigger vehicles, See. law enforcement. That would probably take some time to get up there in the Angeles Crest area. Uh, so hoping this suspect brings this to a close, obeys the commands, opens the door, gets out of the vehicle. But this is a very bizarre move here. What we don't know is if this suspect is armed. Yeah. Um, this, you know, we believe this was a stolen vehicle. We don't know how this driver stole that vehicle, if he or she has a weapon. We see some of the officers now getting out of their vehicles. Will they approach this vehicle or not? According to my colleagues monitoring this here in at Fox 11 News, the cars were spinning and the driver was stuck. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm not sure from this perspective why it looks like the driver would be stuck. But we'll go with that for now. So now it's a standoff here with law enforcement. Uh, you have the dog there. Mm. They're willing to uh, let that driver know there is a dog. Uh, hard to see from this angle, Alex, if there's any move or motion. Because we had heard that the driver had the window open right. at some point. And that may have, have holding some sort of bottle. Hopefully our camera is able to swing around and give us a different perspective. Maybe we could finally see that the driver's side window. So here we are where we have officers ready. We have the police canine ready. Um, and the hope is that this driver will walk out the door and peacefully yeah. surrender. Um, no doubt that officers are giving directions to this person through a loudspeaker from their cars um, and yelling orders on what to do so that this person can be safe and that this can have a safe resolution. Mm -hmm. Whether this person is listening or not, we don't know. It, it's just so strange to me that the driver made this move. I don't know if the driver thought, okay, this is maybe an area I can take the side here and perhaps swing around to go back down the other way. Yeah. I'm not sure what they were thinking, but it was such a bizarre move. And now we have this standoff. I mean, it looks like, are, are there arms out? It, yeah. It's hard to tell from and, this angle. And it looked like the driver was doing everything he or she could to sort of take advantage of the features of an SUV and off-roading, but maybe this was the limit. Yeah, our, our colleagues are saying that the wheels were spinning, that the driver is stuck. So we so. got two arms that are out of the window, and okay. it looks like the driver is communicating with police. It looks like the driver's trying to show, I do not have a weapon in my hand, but that driver has not come out of the vehicle. So we see officers talking into their loudspeaker, giving commands. You wonder why the driver just doesn't open the door, but the driver out, outreached with both arms outside of that window talking. It looks like it's a male driver. Um, having some sort of conversation with law enforcement. You know, they often make sure that the driver turns the car off and tosses the keys out the window. Uh, being that the driver is apparently stuck with those wheels spinning and you can see damage to the car there at the end, uh, that driver can't be thinking they're going to be going anywhere anytime at all. So we'll keep a watch on this to see if that driver does exit that vehicle. It's an intimidating factor there with the, the dog and multiple law enforcement officers blocking that road. Again, arms outstretched. Why there's been no other move, can't tell.
Well, because what you know, law enforcement doesn't know, even though his arms are outstretched, is what's in that vehicle. Is there is there a weapon in that vehicle? Is there something else? Is he holding something? So they're concerned about their own safety at this moment. Clearly, this driver has uh, been very erratic. Um, so until that is why, what they will do is have the driver walk out with the arms right. outstretched, walk on, you know, go onto the ground, possibly lift up the shirt to see the show the there's shirt, no weapon. Show that, so that then they then they approach as a group, so that they know that they, you know, are more safe. Um, but right now, there, as long as that driver remains in the vehicle without um, seeing what else is in there, mm -hmm. they are concerned. And so for officers, you know, they're not on, you know, TV time. They can, they can wait it out. Yeah. They can take as long as they need, you know? Well, you know, the question too is, would the suspect try to run? Hmm. You know, this is an area where we've, we've seen suspects run into the, the hillside mm -hmm. and they'd have to kind of wait that person out or keep that helicopter on them to spot it's them. It's just so dangerous, these sorts of situations. Yeah, we had a, really a story is. on our news at noon o'clock today. Rick Dickert was over a situation where a tanker truck fell 600 feet in mm. Ventura and the driver died, yeah. you know, in, in a hillside that was sort of similar to this. Um, you think about the possibilities when you get up in the mountains there, how quickly something like that can happen, um, which is why the, the smart thing and the hopeful thing that we will see soon is that this driver who appears to be in communication with police mm -hmm. listens to their commands mm -hmm. and then just gets out of that vehicle. Yeah, there's been no move for that driver to open the car door and it doesn't mean that I mean, law enforcement could be ordering them to open the car door, and they're not. So he's cl so the law enforcement, the police there from West Covina, clearly speaking into the into his loudspeaker, clearly telling this guy, you see him there. Mm -hmm. So some officers have their guns pointed. You see the canine is ready to go if need be. Um, as as one officer tries to negotiate with this guy, others you know are ready to move in if need be. So the door's open. Now we see the arms out. And first time he's out of the car, they're coming up onto the street. And There's that's a good move there, that that driver has gone into plain sight of them. This completely following, complying there. Following exactly what law enforcement wants you to do. Mm -hmm. So they've gotten that driver away from the vehicle hands up, getting that driver closer to them, to the law enforcement officers. I haven't seen that driver lift the shirt as you often see to show if there's a weapon or not. Okay, so they have the driver down on the knees there and this pursuit has come to an end. Uh, you know, for that suspect there to know that dog is right there at the ready, that's got to be intimidating. Okay, they're pulling the dog back there so it seems to be the thought that this driver is complying, that officers will move in there to make that arrest, and this pursuit has come to an end peacefully. So the good news, especially with how you know dangerous that this driver was willing to drive, um, it, it appears that nobody was hurt, um, including the driver, and that a peaceful end to yet another pursuit on the streets of Southern California. The mountainside. Southern mountainside. California. We saw two I mean, things we don't usually see. We don't usually see it through a mountainside, and we really don't usually see it drive through a cemetery. Okay, L look at the vehicles coming down the hill. You saw one uh, backing up, thinking, okay, it's going to be a minute before I'm coming down this hillside here. Yeah. Uh, that suspect in custody, but they want to make sure that vehicle is cleared. We would, had been told that there was only one person in the vehicle, perhaps. Police wanted confirmation from that suspect, but they're moving in there to go ahead and definitely clear that vehicle. And just make sure nobody else is in there, make sure that there are no weapons that are in there. Um, but the, the good news, the most important news, it, it seems that they have arrested their suspect, so they'll yeah. quickly be able to get a sense of whether somebody is in there. Their maneuvers right there make you think that it looks like there is not. They're opening up that door just to make sure, looking into the trunk. 
This is uh, San Gabriel Canyon Road, south of Water Canyon, if you know the area. Um, the one thing I'm thinking, this is a stolen car, Alex, and there looked to be some damage to the vehicle as that suspect went there on the side of the road. So if that's your vehicle, it looks like the pursuit has come to an end, but some damage to the vehicle itself. Yeah, hopefully that person has insurance and they can help them with that. The good news is everybody is okay. So let's, uh, are we going to wrap up our pursuit coverage now? Um, I think, okay.